hello everyone and thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're very excited having all of you um, in the audience and uh, having two amazing speakers whom I will introduce to you in a second. My name is Galena Marquez from CX Tuesday by Land Intelligence. This webinar is being recorded, I just resumed recording, and uh, all participants will receive a replay link uh, in the follow-up email. So uh, if you will miss something during this webinar, you will be able to catch up on stuff. Uh, we hear a lot of buzz in the industry lately. Everybody is talking about virtualization, millennials, omnichannel customer experience. It's getting a little overwhelming, don't you think? Uh, what we wanted to do with this webinar is to filter down all that noise and figure out what it is about and what's in it for contact center executives. So as you may see on this slide, we broke down the agenda into three main sections. First is the reality of the contact center today. Second is how ideal contact center should look like tomorrow to drive the business. And finally, how do we get there? We will have a few minutes for Q&A in the end, so please, if you have questions and comments, use the Q&A box and we will get back to them after the discussion. Now let me introduce you our speakers. We truly wanted to bring two different perspectives from two main areas of the contact center operations, management and technology. So we have Mike Aoki from Reflective Kinos here with us. Hello, Mike. Hi, Galena, and hi, everyone. Uh, Mike's area of expertise lays in staff training and onboarding, executive coaching, workplace culture, and so on. Mike is a, uh, is a seasoned trainer and speaker. He serves on the Advisory Council of the Greater Toronto Area Contact Center Association. He was chosen by ICMI.com as one of the top 50 customer service thought leaders on Twitter for the past four years. Mike will give us an overview of the changing workplace environment and what many of the contact center executives should start paying attention to in order to see improvement uh, in the performance and culture. And our next speaker is Marty Tracy from Intelligence. Hello, Marty. Hello, everyone. Hi, Galena. Marty brings over 20 years of experience in business communications technology, contact centers as a service solutions, and everything about building well-function, redundant, integrated contact center. Among the communication solution provider, Marty and his team were one of the first adapters of VoIP in cloud communication technology. Marty's approach to technology is beyond standard understanding of contact center functions. He will be talking about trends in communication technology today with us. And very quickly, special thank you to our signature sponsor. It's 8x8. Uh, they were, uh, when they have heard about this webinar and the subject of the webinar, they were thrilled to support us, even though we explained that this is going to be a, a product neutral webinar. This is the only time you hear about 8x8 today, I promise. But I just wanted to emphasize their passion and understanding of the importance of providing you uh, as contact center executives and contact center professionals uh, with buzz free information in this ever changing environment. So where did the subject come from? Back in December, we came across annual survey by Contact Center Pipeline Magazine about Contact Center biggest challenges and priorities for 2018. A couple of things uh, really grabbed our attention. First, we saw a lack of respect and understanding of Contact Center's role, and also a lack of interdepartment collaboration. It is not a question that Contact Center holds so much data that can help improve so many different aspects of the company operation. And yet, in many cases, it is still seen as an expensive and high maintenance department. Another thing that struck us in this survey is that the biggest goals are not necessarily aligned with biggest challenges, which means contact center executives have so much on their plates, uh, so many needed operational needs that uh, they just don't have enough time to focus on culture and strategic issues. So uh, what is keeping contact centers from heading towards strategic improvements? Mike, let's start with you. How do you see this situation? Well, thanks, Galena. 
one of the biggest things and, and from the contact center pipeline survey was the whole issue about agent attrition. And you know, one of the big, biggest expenses in a contact center is, is the employees, the staff. There's a huge amount of salary there. And also on top of that, the expenses of training and, and hiring people as well. And also one of the you know, gaps that takes place as well when it comes to the, the agents themselves is the level of experience that's needed. And of course, the old anecdote is that it takes typically anywhere from up to six months for somebody to become even you know, basically competent in their role as being a frontline agent and a year or more for mastery. And some more technical specifications, it could take two or three years to, become, to gain mastery in that. And so the challenge is how do we actually find the right people and retain them and really stop the bleeding, stop the whole idea about agent attrition. Because that's one of the biggest challenges right now when it comes to present contact centers is the, the bleeding off of the loss of people. And one of the things that the Incoming Calls Management Institute, ICMI, found was that 33% turnover in terms of annual turnover rates for frontline agents. That's a huge amount. That's a third of your contact center every year turning over and then having to fill those desks. And so when it comes down to it, you know, one of the biggest things when it comes to why people or why agents leave are because they feel frustrated and frustrated by a lack of tools, a lack of support. Most people want to do a great job. They really want to accomplish something and help people. That's why they fit that profile about being hired as a customer service person. The challenge becomes when they're not able to do it, when they're restricted by poor tools, poor technology, potentially poor policies and restrictions of some kind, and they get frustrated and they begin to leave. And so, you know, one of the ways to look at this, and certainly today we're talking a lot about technology, is to look in terms of being able to reduce agent effort. And we talk a lot about customer effort, being able to make things easier for customers and, and, and make their jobs or their own uh, you know, process easier as well in terms of being able to buy and use whatever it is your company sells. But now let's take a look in terms of how to reduce agent effort. And I'll give an example about one of those things, and that's with knowledge bases. So just the ability of an agent to go and look up an answer to a common customer question. Well, a lot of contact centers are still using older technology. So they're using, I've seen places use just Excel spreadsheets with all the answers there on an Excel spreadsheet or in SharePoint, which is great for projects, but isn't meant to be a massive database for an entire department. And the problem with that is that if an agent can't find an answer quickly, if they're having to go in instead, stall or in some way with a customer or put the customer on hold to go talk to a supervisor to find out an answer, it really makes the agent feel frustrated. And it also increases the average handle time and as well, it makes the customer uh, you know, view the call as being more of a difficult or challenging call, a satisfying call, because it's taking so long to get an answer. And so those challenges really pop up. And again, the agents get frustrated by that because they're having to say, please hold, I'm looking it up for you. I'm trying to find the answer for you, et cetera, where just simply changing the knowledge management system, bringing in a new, more modern system that allows you to search by certain keywords, that actually gives different levels of answers based upon if you're a tier one agent who's actually doing the searching, or a tier two to agent who's doing their searching. Just those things alone make things so much easier for agents. It reduces their effort. It allows them to focus more on helping the customer versus babysitting the computer system. And that's really crucial as well. I'll give you a second example. I was recently working with a company that is converting from an older CRM system to a really much more modern CRM system, customer relationship management system. And the new one lets their, that lets their field salespeople and their inside salespeople in the contact center communicate seamlessly. So now, whether it's a field salesperson going to a customer's actual location or an inside salesperson in the contact center making an outbound call to that location, they're both looking off the same files. And they both have a chance to see the same information and be able to update things immediately. And so before in the past where there was this big disconnect between the field sales team and the inside sales team, now they're both working together on the same side. And they're not competing with each other either. They're actually working together. And that, again, lowers agent effort and also increases job satisfaction as well. And so technology, better tools, can lower agent effort and therefore lower agent attrition and turnover as well. Now, one thing too, and Marty, I just talked about the agent expectations, and I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts in the next slide regarding customer expectations as well. So I'll turn things over to you. So one of the real questions that comes out of all those behaviors is, how well is your customer experience aligned with your customer's expectation? And it, we have to be clear in saying, we're not asking about your center's performance, about how your agents perform, how efficient is your center. We're asking, what do your customers really think of the experience they're getting? Because managing the internals and providing the customer experience are two very different things. Are you in your center really delivering a competitive advantage in your marketplace? So over the last decade, the pace of technological advancement has broken all the traditional laws of timing and development. 
communication is a big part of this rapid change, being a very technology-driven part of any business. As the front line for communication with prospects and customers, your contact center really needs to provide an experience that is aligned with your customers' preferences and expectations. With customers demanding multiple channels for communication today, this has become a more diverse task. It's not just about having a website and, and agents from a voice perspective anymore. So as a contact center, where do you start? We found the best way to determine, you know, one of the best places to start from is determine where in that, that contact center evolution you stand today. And we generally break it into four stages. So today is your contact center in the primary stage, which is where we see a lot of contact centers. In the primary stage, your engagements are restricted to the vendor's preferred channel. So in a lot of cases, just voice. Each interaction starts with no awareness of the past engagement. So I know we all experience calling a contact center, entering information, getting to an agent, and you're starting from moment zero. They don't know anything about why you're there, who you are to them, or, or you know what this experience is going to be. The challenge is left to the agent to really put together that full picture just from the brief introduction and the questions. They don't have any background on anything that's happening within the engagement with the business. And what happens is all customers tend to get the exact same experience. So we're not really delineating a different experience for different levels of customers, different levels of commitments. And the last piece about a primary contact center is the majority of the focus is on KPIs and there's no real focus on strategy and customer experience. And that's our, our primary or baseline where a lot of contact centers start today. The next level for us is an engaged contact center. At this level, customers are served with some info of prior engagements, so the agent has an understanding of what the last interactions may be, but in most cases, this is on the agent to do the due diligence and the CRM notes to gather this information quickly. Maybe multiple channels are in use in an engaged center. Maybe you have chat, you know, maybe you have a little video, but these channels are still siloed. Where there's no sharing of the data or the information or, or, or moving an escalation from one channel to the next, you know, taking a call, taking a chat into a call experience with an expert, say in a particular product line. The customer experience is considered to be the agent's responsibility. Everything really is on the agent. And then, you know, what are the tools the agent has access to to make this happen? So you don't get a predictable outcome within your contact center. Everything comes down to each agent's interaction. As we move into the next level, it's known as the organized contact center. And this is where we really start to see the major changes. Customer engagement experience takes advantage of prior contact data across all channels. And the most important part is the customer has access to their choice. So they're using the channel that they want to communicate through. Customer experience is enhanced by pre-existing relationship information and knowledge that the agent has. So they have an idea of why the customer is calling, what they might be looking for, what experts they might need to engage. From this, the customer gains a proactively engaged experience that's beneficial to them in very predictable ways. So as an executive in the contact center, when the experiences that your customers are receiving are predictable, it's a very good thing because you're controlling the positive outcomes in a proactive way. And the last level we use for the contact center, which in a rapidly advancing technological world is very hard to achieve, is kind of a leadership segment. And in a leadership contact center, we have customers, the customer perceives the engagements as proactive and full of data related to their interactions. Customer believes the business regularly engages in proactive contact with the customer and for their benefit. So not reaching out to them to find if they want to buy something else or, or put them in that position where they feel like, you know, they're being surveyed or they just want to be sold something, but actually engaging them from a value perspective where they're perceiving it as a value perspective and using all the knowledge that you're gaining from the tools in your contact center to do this. The customer experiences business process adjustments in real time based on their long-term value and prior experience with your organization. So instead of gathering information and having to get back to customers or prospects, being able to engage those things immediately, from previous data collected to tying in experts to having the right materials available in a knowledge base, like Mike mentioned. 
interactions fully reflect the customer's preference, their business relationship and prior experience in a predictable and measurable manner. Manner, excuse me. So this is the CS experience. And, and the key in moving your organization forward is where are we today and how do we map ourselves through these stages? So Galena, when we talk about you know, making sure your customer experience is aligned with their expectations, all of the tools that we're talking about today and what Mike's mentioned is a key aspect of helping get you through this process. Thanks for your overview, Marty. Uh, I think the scenarios that you explained just now to everybody uh, help understand uh, where the contact center stands today. Um, and I hope our participants can use it, uh, use this information. It obvious that the whole situation calls for a big change. So uh, what contact center should look like to ensure its capability to support the business in the future? Mike, let's start with you. Well, thanks, Galena. And just to build upon what Marty said as well earlier, technology is really offering a lot of ways to help improve that agent performance. And one of the keys, again, is give agents the right tools. Let them do a good job and equip them with what they need to help customers. Now, remember what I said about reducing agent churn, the agent side of churn, by providing better tools? Well, here's an example of this. I was working with one client that had actually grown by acquisitions and mergers. And they had over 20 different customer databases. So they had bought or merged with 20 different companies. And so when a customer called in, the very first question they were at, that they would ask a customer was, what company were you with prior to the rebranding under this big company's umbrella name? And when the customer would say, oh, I used to be with XYZ company, the agent would then have to find XYZ's database to go and pull up that customer information. And every one of those 20 databases would search for customers based upon different criteria. So for a customer of ABC company, you'd look by their account number. A customer for, uh, you know, uh, 123 company, you would look at the terms of their address. And so it, it drove the agents crazy. And so what happened, though, is once the company was able to put in technology to allow basically a, a CRM or, or customer relationship management display or overlay on top of that to make it much easier for the agents to actually search for things, you could then key in the customer's account number or their name or their address, didn't matter what, into this overlay, and it would automatically pull you to the correct database and pull up the information into the database. The, that kind of technology really greatly helped the agents. It made their job easier and let them focus on the customer instead of having to babysit the software. And it made the customers happier as well because they're getting better service. And so that's an example of how technology can really help agent performance. And as a contact center leader, the gaps in that really showed up in terms of what happened prior to that with the old 20 databases, because as a leader, they would, they would actually see the rise in average handle times because the agents were struggling to find the right database and struggling to pull up the right information. And they'd also see long hold times as well as in some cases, agents had to place customers on hold right after saying, oh, may I have your account number, please, and your name, please, boom, they have to put the customer on hold for you know, a full 60 seconds to try to find the right database, et cetera. And so agents would see those efficiency metrics pop up as, as being a, a big example of where the gaps were. And it would also show up as well in effectiveness metrics like customer satisfaction and net promoter scores as, age, as customers actually complained about things like the agent was too slow or they took forever to find my info. And so, you know, having a really great CRM overlay like that or having getting closer to the idea about having one screen or as much information as possible at one screen and in the future can really help the agent's performance quite a bit and really help improve the customer satisfaction as well. A second example of technology, and again, focusing back on the people and the, the soft skills side of things, is how analytics right now, looking at in terms of different kinds of speech analytics, text analytics, and also artificial intelligence, can be used to be able to identify pop possible upsells for customers and also retention opportunities as well for customers. So I'll give you an example, and we all have smartphones, mobile phones of some kind, right? So here's an example. You contact your smartphone provider, your telecom carrier, and as soon as the, as, as the uh, customer service rep pulls up your profile, it automatically will also search in terms of your, of your usage and highlight certain key things. And then say, for instance, you use a lot of data and typically exceed or get very close to or exceed your data plan every month. Well, a pop-up will automatically come on the screen for this agent suggesting that they actually give an opportunity upsell for an improved data plan. And a really good system of analytics will actually put down what the average savings would have been, been in the previous three months with this enhanced plan. And so those kinds of things make it much easier for an agent to spot up sell opportunities because instead of they're having to manually look through the past three bills to calculate, look, what might be a good upsell opportunity, a pop-up screen tells them, suggests this to the customer. 
And that's up to the agent as far as how they want to do that with their own level of sales skill and comfort and their ability to go and work with their particular customer to be able to get that upsell and close that sale. But at least suggests it though and takes out some of the manual calculation that agents had to do in the past to be able to go and improve upsells. So it also increases customer retention as well because now the customer is on the best data plan for them and actually gets to save a bit of money as well as part of that. So these are some examples about how technology in terms of speech analytics, AI, and different kinds of CRM systems can make things so much easier for the agents. And that in turn, again, improves employee engagement and reduces agent attrition. And it also improves as well customer experience for the overall customer themselves. And so those are some examples about how some future tech, current and future tech, can really help agents give better customer service performance. So Galina, I'll turn things back over to you in terms of the next slide. Thank you, Mike. Marty, from your perspective, how contact centers uh, in the future should look like? The contact center today has been built around a, a number of different generations, the baby boomers, the Gen X, and, and the big question for a lot of companies is, you know, who is your next contact center? And as you can see from the graphic, you know, 92 million millennials are out there, you know, waiting to be customers, engaging as customers already, and there's a whole generation below them as well. This is a question that I have found that not enough businesses are asking today. And the negative effects of ignoring this change in generations will come crashing in three times faster than they would have even five years ago. And, and this is because of technology and the way the world is changing so rapidly. For most businesses, your next customer is going to be a millennial. These are the customers that grew up in an era of rapidly changing technological advancement. Your next customer is looking for a different customer service journey. The level of service they desire is similar, but they're often far more open to resolving issues without human interaction. So if the proper tools are available, like you know, self-serve tools, website tools, they will use them. You must recognize and address the different ways that these millennials want to communicate and have access to the information and answers. All of the technological advances Mike has mentioned are great for helping address customers more efficiently. We just need to be sure that these are all accessible in the customer's desired channel and that these interactions are complete. The technology is giving the next generation of customers access to demand levels of service and support that in the past did not have to be provided. The organizations that recognize and provide this will be winners in their verticals and in their marketplaces. At first, some of the changes may seem hard. They, they have been for me. And some of the demands may go against even what you consider great customer service principles. The idea of sending somebody to search or find their own answer doesn't seem like great customer service. But in fact, if it's what they desire, it truly is. So in the end, it's about providing the experience the customer desires with a true resolution. It's also very important to shift your thinking. And, you know, if you're in my Gen X category, it can be very challenging. But all of the items that are often held up as negatives when describing the millennial mindset are in fact, I find positive when it comes to your organization and to contact centers. For example, they're not patient. Well, that's fantastic because they're not patient, but they love self-service technology. So kind of, you know, redundant tasks, simple tasks, uh, gathering information. They don't, they don't want to sit on hold and take up an agent's time. They want to find it in a knowledge base. They want to chat about it. They want to get it done quickly. And they're willing to dig in. They're used to having the technology to do this. They are all about technology, so give it to them to help yourselves. They adapt easy to non-voice non channels and, and self-service tools. They do want to dig in and, and resolve all of those issues if you give them the tools to do it. I work in technology, and you know I have a... a, a a, a number of millennials on the staff and it's fascinating to me how they just want to figure it out themselves. They won't walk down the hall and ask that answer. They want to find the tools in our systems and in our knowledge base and online. So if we give it to them, we're creating more productivity. My last one I'll mention, it's one of my personal favorites, is that they're not tolerant or loyal. The greatest thing about the millennial generation and the way they grew up with technology is if you listen, they'll tell you exactly what you're doing wrong and even how they think it should be fixed. 
Whereas for years as organizations, we've been paying consultants, outside firms to research, to tell us these things. Gartner, tell us what's wrong. You know, go out and find these things for us. If you take the time and listen, they will actually tell you exactly what they want. They will deliver the service for you. And if you think of these things in the context of running your contact center, they're taking a large part of the burden that you consider the customer service lift today and saying, give us the tools and we'll do it ourselves. Just be there to help us finish the experience, whether it's through expertise, something we can't find, and in the channel that we want to make it happen. So there's really great opportunity with these customers. You just have to pay attention and, and be ready to service them in a way that's going to work for them. The change that they demand, thanks to technology, will actually improve your business. And the most important point is understanding that the technology empowers them in a way that other generations, you know, did not have the ability to be empowered. You know, a negative effect in a customer experience today can be known by millions of people in minutes. It used to take years. So when you're thinking about who is your next customer and, and how we're going to work with them and address them, you really need to be paying attention to this generation and how they use technology. And that's how we're seeing it in the marketplace today, Galena. As a millennial, I totally agree with you, Marty. How, how uh, contact centers should operate to meet expectations of those millennials? Well, this, this factors in more about some of the things Mike talked about and, and what are the tools to address the things I talked about and, and the channels and the, the way that they want to communicate. And the key to engaging with the new customers, you know, websites, artificial intelligence, automation, analytics, by removing the silos within your organization inside the contact center and bringing all the data and communication together, we can provide a more complete customer experience. Customers engage with the website as a starting point for communication. You know, the internet has changed the way customers gather information, ask questions, and makes decisions. The starting point for the vast majority of all interactions is your website. And it's crucial that you understand what they're looking for on the site and provide that information. Also provide different communication channels for escalation from the first interaction on the website. When we get the customer to the website, we don't want to lose that traction. There's so many other distractions, so many other competitors, so many other websites for them to go look at. We want to make sure the information they've come to get is there. And if it's not there, that we're immediately there, whether it be via chat, easy access to a phone call, you know, to help them find that information. We want to be able to be there to escalate those interactions into the channel that's going to get them a resolution. Customers and agents' actions can trigger automated process and reduce manual work. This is really a dual benefit. You know, it's, it's not only speeding up the interaction and producing more information with the customer, but it's, it's giving the agent the tools that they need and want to be efficient and, and be complete in their job. This is an area where can technology can provide a huge, you know, increase in both service and productivity. Giving the agent the ability to proactively engage customers on your site or assist them in an escalation from the site using chat, voice, video, other channels, and giving them the knowledge of what the customer had say, looked at at the site, what they're interested in, so they're proactively working towards a resolution while beginning the engagement with the customer, or even engage with the customer on the site using a functionality like a co-browse, where you've started a chat, you join them on the site, you walk them through the steps to where the exact information is, and having the abilities to do things like escalate that to an expert from a voice perspective or even a video perspective. Agents can also trigger a set of automated actions from engagements for different follow-up activities. So we're back into the proactive aspect of things, whether it be marketing interactions, follow-up by an expert, uh, follow-up to see if they were able to actually put a solution into play, all of which is tracked and noted for future interactions with that customer. So having all of your data interactions tied together takes what used to be multiple visits and often frustration and makes a single transaction with proactive follow-ups. It increases the opportunities for expert interactions and improves brand loyalty. Not to be lost in the advantages of technology on the customer experience is it also really improves the agent experience. By automating repetitive tasks, 
creating better overall experiences, and increasing positive interactions. Technology is at the core of making all of these changes smooth and efficient, but it shouldn't be lost, and I know everyone on this session knows this. The process management and adaption of all of these games is still driven by great management teams and having a real planned out vision and strategy for execution of your next contact center phase. And that's how technology will impact that next generation, Galena. Thank you, Marty. Well, it, it all makes perfect sense. And uh, Jana is helping me moderating this webinar today. We both are millennials, and we just exchanged the sites, and uh, we, we know we are on the same page because uh, we have very little patience uh, when we have to explain the same issue several times to uh, several different people, especially when it seems, you know, simple enough. So, yeah, we do expect companies to have all the records about our interactions with their websites and with brands. And it is, it is literally surprising when they don't have this information. Um, so, how do we get there? Uh, what should happen in the executive suites and in the contact centers uh, to make those uh, changes happen? Uh, Mike, what's your opinion on that? Well, thanks, Galena. Again, my focus is really more on the people side of the business. And so one of the biggest things for leaders to look at is the agent journey. And bear in mind, for years now, we've been talking about the customer journey the journey that customers take from seeing an ad for your product to going into one of your stores to buying a product to maybe making a warranty claim down the line or, or ordering more you know, accessories, et cetera. And about how all those different touch points for external customers, website, ads, magazine ads, billboards, you know, the customer service, the IVR, et cetera, how all those things impact a customer. The flip side now, though, is looking in terms of how does, what is your agent's journey? What are they going through? And, and the whole concept about an agent journey, it actually comes from a, a gentleman named Neil DeLynn, who's with a company called Sonnet Insurance in Canada. And they're a very innovative online insurance company. And they also won the, the GTAC, the Greater Toronto Area Customer uh, Contact Center uh, Award for customer um, uh, excellence in terms of this, because they really focused on a lot of how their agents actually interact day to day with the company. And you know what they really plot out is, and think about it this way for your, for your own agents now as a leader, when you look in terms of, as Marty mentioned, the 92 million millennials that are out there, right, that's going to form a huge part of your staff, especially since most customer service roles are very much entry-level positions. That's going to form a huge part of your frontline and, and, at this point, team leader and even first-line manager level uh, staff. And so the key is, what is your experience in terms of being a, an actual employee? And so it really is a leader taking a look in terms of everything from, you know, looking at your, at your potential employees in terms of how they were as customers. So again, how does all your advertising affect the impressions people have of your company? In many cases, millennials want to work for companies that have great social, positive social reputations. And so do you have it online? Do you, does your advertising reflect that? Does your media reflect that in terms of being a company that people want to work for? And a good company as well. Also in terms of how, what is your company's reputation as an employer? Because again, now millennial employees are very active. They'll look at you know, websites like Glassdoor, dot, for instance, dot com, and take a look in terms of what is your company's reputation? What do past employees say about your company? They'll look at that as well. And also in terms of, from an HR perspective, what is the job description like? Where is it being advertised? What is the actual online application process like through your website or through email? How promptly are they getting responses back? How are those responses worded? Is it the old school, thank you for applying, we will get back to you? Or is it a very warm and friendly, more modern approach to that? Also, in terms of the interview, what's the first phone interview like? How's that being run? What's the first you know, face-to-face -face interview like? What is the whole recruitment process like? When someone's hired, what's the onboarding process like? I mean, a lot of companies right now still spend the first day of a new hire program just simply talking about how great the company is, but from the company perspective, stock prices, history of the company, et cetera. Not about how great it is to work there, but how great the company is from a financial standpoint. And also talking about HR forms and filling those out, payroll, you know, et cetera. How much of that first day though is spent actually confirming to a brand new employee that they made the right choice to come to that company? How much of it actually gives them a flavor for how good the workplace will be, the kind of tools that they'll get, how much coaching and support and training they'll get, and how it'll be easier for them to be a really great customer service person. So really looking in terms of that employee journey. Also looking in terms of what is that agent's new hire program like? What is the first six months or first year like? What is done to retain agents? Is there a career path in there going from a tier one to a tier two agent or going from there onto team manager? 
Is there a, a career path in terms of going through different product lineups, for instance, that you might do, or certain, certain divisions in terms of going from, say, voice-only channel to voice and text channel, going on from there to, say, you know, in a couple of years, video customer service. So again, are there opportunities there for customers and, and sorry, for millennials in terms of being agents to grow and expand their career set? Because one of the challenges, and I know Marty, you touched upon this when it comes to millennial, millennials as customers, is the fact that there is a lack of loyalty that's there. And that's also true in terms of millennials. And a positive spin on it is they won't put up with nonsense. And they're certainly willing to go elsewhere if they find a better opportunity. And so the whole thing about that is, and the great part about that is, it keeps you on your toes. It makes you think about how do you want to be as a leader providing the tools and the inspiration and the career growth and the coaching to really help retain good people. Because really good people want the tools that they need to provide a really great performance, a really great job for their customers, and they want to feel they're growing and expanding. And so how can you really do that to improve employee engagement and morale and retention? Because all that will result in really great customer service with really happy employees. So that's my take in terms of looking at some of the cultural changes taking place in the future when it comes to the agent journey. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Well, this is a great overview. Uh, I have a little reminder to all our participants um, that we have a Q&A box and we will be addressing all the questions in the end. Uh, we have a great question from Stephen. Uh, Stephen will make sure that we will get to it. We will not miss you. I'll give Marty a chance to uh, speak about uh, how do we get to the ideal contact center situations in the future from his perspective. Marty? Well, regardless of your generation geography or income bracket most customers want a connected con customer experience with with the companies they engage in the solutions they're looking for the products today's customers want access to all the information or answers with just a few clicks making the information available is the key starting point to a good customer service experience by having data available across different channels and groups to share and remove silos in your organization so that your group message and customer experience becomes consistent. That's a battle I fight in my own organization all the time is we work together all the time. You know, our, our, our message to customers should be consistent. We should be responding the same way efficiently and effectively all the time. Your customers have a better experience as do your agents who will truly want to be successful you know, and communicate these things and do their jobs great. And by having the tools and the experience in place, it really gives them the opportunity to do that. We do live in an era where technology is giving us the ability to make more predictable outcomes and give people the tools to make these things happen, not just always rely on finding that right person for that particular instance. Great people always make the difference but we're trying to use technology to improve all the experiences. This environment also provides management with access to a full customer journey and all the related data, which is incredibly important to understanding, you know, how are we doing and how are we executing? Management has more data and tools to analyze and create strategy, not just measure KPI performance. This leads to better training, quicker adaption to best practices, and a better overall context and our environment. All of these components are part of the connected customer experience and can separate your organization from the competition. Thank you, Marty. Even though it is no brainer, uh, contact centers should be implementing and starting to use those tools. Uh, it also sounds like it is associated with uh, a major capital investment. It, it's probably going to be very expensive. And I think one of the biggest challenges for the contact center executives would be to get a significant budget approved by the C-suite. So, Marta, do you have an opinion on that? You bet I do. An optimized contact center, I've always felt, is going to pay for itself. Now, I recognize walking in to a C-level executive, and I deal with a lot of them, and saying that, you, you get a lot of different reactions, especially from the CFO. But the reality of it is, is that, you know, I work in an environment where we work with a lot of contact centers and they are the lifeblood of so many organizations. I actually did a presentation for a Fortune 100 last year where I removed the word agent supervisor from the entire presentation to present the argument that their entire organization of 5,000 people should be measured the same way everyone in the contact center was. And it was a very interesting result until I told everybody I was actually talking about contact center functionality. So it is, it is often an uphill battle. But 
the tool and where we are in history today is making it much easier and giving the contact center executives really the tools that they're going to need to make this happen. You know, I think if we start with the OPEX model in itself, you know, the majority of innovation and real applications being put forth in the contact center world today are coming from the cloud-based solutions. That's where all the primary development is. That's where all the new applications are coming from. The benefit for a contact center executive when it comes to that is the OPEX model of the cloud provides lower points of entry from a cost perspective to access to these technologies and the flexibility to quickly and inexpensively add new applications. We live in a world of technology where if a technology is presented to you on January 1st, by December, there may actually be a better version of that technology. It could be by June. And the OPEX world really gives you the dynamic in these solutions where they're constantly being upgraded. You know, you're working through adding chat to your website, and two months later, CoBrowse is now available as part of the same solution you're paying for on an OPEX model. So it, it really gives you an advantage. With access to the OPEX model and these tools, you're allowed to forego the large upfront capital costs of gaining functionalities like this in the past, and you're able to build your case for the C-level suite as the contact center evolves. So as you take each step in the progression, you're able to share the value that's coming from it and the ROI, allowing you to continue to evolve the center. So as far as integration, you know, optimization of the contact center does pay for itself. And the keys are things like integration, customization, and automation. You know, with multiple channel options, integrations, and workflow automation, not only do interactions times improve, satisfaction improves, and a clear customer journey can be shared and analyzed. You can actually look at where things begin, how they ended, what the results were, what the effects. Applications like workforce management. If you have a contact center of over 50 agents, the, you know, maximization in the staff efficiency can take a huge bite out of the contact center's largest expense. Whether it's a reduction in staff based on efficiency or an improvement in services and related performance matrix, this is an easy win that can show hard dollars to a C-level executive on what the contact center is accomplishing. All of the tools provide better data and reporting to help create the best training and process and practices so that you have these tools and can share these pieces. Brand loyalty can start with a great product, but if you look across all of the successful organizations across any vertical, their long-term health rests on great customer service. Nothing costs more than a poor experience, especially with today's consumers. You know, we talk about loyalty and fickleness. It's not what people want to see it as, is they're disloyal. They're just used to having choices. They're used to getting exactly what they want because technology drives it. You know, everything that was horrible about cabs got better with Uber, driven by technology. You know, we've seen entire industries disrupted by companies that come from completely different areas or completely different verticals. So with today's tools, we can catch, you know, all of these different things while they're in progress quickly and put in, you know, corrective measures to make sure we're retaining brand loyalty and that we have the consumer experiences we need and share them with our C-Log executives. So, you know, the hidden costs of poor customer experiences now can be shared and shown with your C-suite and give you the, you know, the, the, the ammunition you need to put the contact center in play. Thank you, Marty. Well, uh, we actually ran out of time, but um, I think we can get a couple of extra minutes for two questions because they are they all are great questions. We have Steve, and he addresses the concern about limitations that companies engaging the contact center places on the uh, IT infrastructure. The IT infrastructure in the companies uh, often are not designed to enable uh, that ideas that you, uh, Marty and Mike, are mentioning in this webinar. And uh, Steve says that he has built contact centers with over a thousand agents, and they had to be able to use 35 different applications. So, how how would you comment on that, Mike? 
Well, thanks, Colleen. And thanks, Stephen, as well, for that question. It's been a le- Mario, leave it up to you as far as talking about the IT side of things. I'll focus on the people training side of things, which is that in a scenario like that, where you have agents that have over 35 different applications to use, Obviously, you want to try to work away from that, but in the meantime, some workarounds you can use to help them adjust to having that many applications really boils down to training and coaching. So being able to help your agent set up their desk properly with dual monitors and being able to go and place certain more frequently used applications front and center on each one of those monitors and having other ones alive in the background as well to flip back into. And part of it is also during training, especially during, and again, as a, as a trainer, I'll say this, part of it during training is really focusing and helping your agents understand the workflow that takes place. So which application should I always have up front when the call drops in? Which one should I want to refer to next then? And what is the logical flow of that? Because you want your agents to build a logical pattern. If it goes from the basic CRM system to specific billing system and then to the order system as different applications, you want your agents to actually learn how to use those and practice in role plays how to smoothly transition between them. As well, you also want to equip your agent with some suggested scripting, quite frankly, in terms of why there may be some delays during the phone call. Just little phrases like, oh, I'm looking it up for you right now. It'll just take a moment to pull that up for you. Well, that's a really great question. I'll find out for you right now. I'm just pulling an application open to find out for you. And it does take a moment because there is so much information there. Just certain key scripted phrases like that. Basically, they're stalling phrases, quite frankly. But just giving your agents phrases like that to either write or, or put in and say verbally can really help your agents be able to cope with the flow and, frankly, their frustration and the customer's frustration of having to go and delay between different applications going forward. And from the coaching perspective, one of the keys there is for the coaches to either do side-by-side sit-ins so they can actually see how the agent is using their mouse and keyboard and how they use their monitors and, and what applications are open in front and center, or, idea, or you know, barring that, using remote monitoring with screen capture. So again, they can see the same thing in terms of where the agent's moving their mouse and, and clicking on different applications, et cetera, so that the team leaders and coaches can actually coach back to workflow and really help the agents be as efficient as possible with all those systems. And I know those are band-aids as far as the current system, but it will help your agents be able to perform better in terms of juggling all these multiple systems. And Marty, I'll turn things over to you as far as the IT perspective in terms of how to deal with it. So Stephen, um, I've seen the scenario oh, at least 100 times over the last 20 years. And uh, our team, whenever somebody uses the phrase single plane of glass, we call that the unicorn because it's often talked of, but I don't know that any of us have ever seen it. Um, There's really two different scenarios. If you're starting from a clean sheet of paper, it's pretty easy to get down to a few simple applications today because of technology. Because the contact centers themselves incorporate so many things that used to be separate applications, because the CRMs themselves do the same things, because their APIs are open and far more easy to customize. It's easy to tie these databases together. There are solutions where you used to have five to six different databases for the WFM, the recording, the analytics, all the other pieces that now have all of it within one database. The bigger challenge comes probably like in the environment you're discussing where you have a legacy environment and you're trying to move forward off of these 20 different platforms. And the only way to really successfully do it is to take your contact center through those stages. You know, one stage at a time, a couple stages at a time, you know, pick off the the applications that are most important and begin to integrate them and work with them and use them together. And by no means is it a simple process. It takes great project management, lots of organization, and a lot of adaptability, but it's absolutely a doable exercise. And technology is is really at the forefront of, of helping that exercise become possible. And we see it in every interaction as consumers that we have. Um, Sadly, I feel that I see poor versions of it more than I see good versions of it. But it's definitely something that's becoming, you know, far more easy to address. At the same time, there's definitely more diverse set of applications. So it's something that uh, we accomplish a lot. And uh, to us, we really see it as kind of a struggle of the past. Um, it's something that we see a lot of evolution to, and it is happening in today's marketplace. Thank you, Marty. Uh, Stephen is actually commenting here, but we are limited on time, and I would offer to take this discussion offline, and uh, we will be sharing our speakers' contact information in the follow-up email as well. So if anyone has a specific question or 
um, urge for the discussion, you will have a chance to do that. I just wanted to address one more question from Angela. Uh, she says, in my company, our contact center is used as a springboard to launch talented, uh, talented young people uh, into other upper level uh, within the company, which is great. However, how can I help upper management see that uh, constant turnover is bad for service and morale? And how can I get them to stop treating the, uh, this department as the entry level? This is a great question, I think. Mike, it's for you. Okay, great. Thanks, Galena. And Angela, thanks for asking that question as well. And you're right, it is a, it, it's kind of a backhanded compliment in a way. It means you're actually hiring and, and grooming and, and you know, developing really great people that the rest of the company wants to get their hands on. The plus side of that is it does, as part of that, give you great connections to other parts of the company and also great allies as well, because then other departments now actually have that customer service perspective from people that you've developed and trained. But you're right, though, it's a challenge for you because you're losing people in that context. And so part of this really is looking in terms of, you know, looking in terms of how can you also provide growth within your contact center? And are there certain career progressions that you can have in terms of being able to develop not just them into team managers, for instance, or quality assurance coaches, but other areas? Are there opportunities there for them to move on to, say, you know, workforce management or to into training, for instance, as a way to do it or to work into different tiers of being an agent? So, you know, tier one, tier two, help desk support, et cetera to provide those same kinds of growth opportunities and help grow people within the, the department without losing them. That's another aspect to look at as well. And another part of this too is the fact that, you know, if you, you're having that kind of attrition taking place in, in, um, you know, in the company as well, you can also look in terms of, you know, how are you able to go and really help people, you know, grow within their career, within staying in the department itself, by giving them opportunities to actually develop their skill set. So being able to look in terms of are there special projects they can take on, or other things that can help them continue their growth without actually having to leave the department, or the different rotations that you can take place, because sometimes what happens in terms of agents is they get bored or frustrated, you know, in terms, in terms of doing one aspect, like say inbound customer service calls, and after a year or so, they just want a bit of a break. And so can it then shift to a different area doing, say, you know, written correspondence, live chat, SMS, text messaging, et cetera, for six months to get them to break off the lines before they rotate back on again. And so rotating duties can also help as well to, again, help people feel like they're having growth and having a bit of variety in their job without feeling like they have to apply to other departments going forward as well. So just a few things there to look at in terms of some in-house retention. But again, I think it's a really great compliment about the fact that you're able to grow people for other departments. It just sometimes I know it can be a challenge as well going forward. Thank you, Mike. Marty, do you have a comment about this question as well? Well, my first job out of college was in a contact center, and it may have actually still be my favorite work environment I ever worked in. But, uh, you know, from a technology perspective, I think a lot of the tools we talk about help you share the value of the contact center with the C-level by focusing on how it's affecting the customers. You know, where is that customer effect being seen in your business? You know, how are you improving different aspects of the business, whether it be on a sales side or an expense side by cutting down on returns and other interactions? And really, you know, it was a, one of the toughest things for me to learn in my career was how to effectively self-promote, right? But using these tools to, to promote the impact of the contact center on the overall organization. Because I do find at the C-level that is a far too often missed tool. And when you work in communications and you've been around contact centers, I've watched, you know, great companies grow and fail, you know, based on that performance. So using the tools to really create a path where you can regularly communicate with them the impact that your people are having and maybe engaging their impact with the other departments that that's having an effect on. So that would be the method I'd be looking at. Thank you, Marty. Well, I have to uh, wrap it up and thank you everybody uh, for joining us today. I know our speakers are uh, thrilled being here and I know that they both can speak for hours about this topic. Uh, and they're very good at that. Unfortunately, we're way over time right now. Um, all the questions that we uh, couldn't address today, we will take offline and we'll make sure that you guys will be connected with our speakers. You will be getting uh, an email with a, re a replay link and with the contact information, both uh, from Marty and Mike. 
So if you want to contact them on LinkedIn or uh, by email, you will have a chance to do that. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day. Bye-bye.